Some of you have probably noticed that the existing timescale toolbar assets from the asset store don't work as expected in Unity 6.3. And that's not really the asset's fault. Unity has fundamentally changed how the main toolbar works in 6.3, which means a lot of older editor extensions simply can't hook into it anymore. The good news is that Unity finally gives us a first class way to extend the main toolbar ourselves. And in this video, we're going to build a custom timescale slider using the new Unity Editor toolbars API. So let's get started and take control of the editor again. Let's start with something really simple. We'll just add one button to the main toolbar. We're going to include the toolbar's namespace. This is the key addition in Unity's 6.3 LTS that gives us access to the new main toolbar extension points, including custom buttons, sliders, and other toolbar elements. And this all works using UI toolkits. So let's also include UI elements. Now let's define a static factory method. Unity will call this method to construct the toolbar element when the editor loads. And inside, we can use the editor GUI utility to fetch an icon we can use for the button. Then we can wrap that icon in a main toolbar content object, and then we can create and return the actual toolbar button. Here, we're passing in the content we just created, and then we define what happens when the button is clicked. In this case, we're just going to open the project settings window using the built-in settings service. Now we can't forget the most important part. We need to add a main toolbar element attribute here. The first part is the path where we can find this in the context menu, and the dock position tells Unity where the element should appear visually in the toolbar layout. Let's go see what it looks like. If I go ahead and right click in the menu toolbar area here, there's a new section here named project. And here we can see the attribute has created the open project settings button for us. By toggling that on, we can see we have the little gear icon here. If I hold control, I can drag it away from its default position to either the left or right side. And if I leave it docked here over on the right side and click it, it will open the project settings window. Now I'm just going to dock this where I'd normally have it. And of course, if I was to move away from this and just click that icon again, it'll focus on the project settings tab again instead of opening a new window. Seems simple, right? Well, let's make something more useful than this. Let's define a new class to hold our toolbar slider. We can start with some constants for the min and max time scale, and maybe later we can add some padding to this element. Now, just like the other main toolbar element, we're going to have a factory method, and we can add the attribute we need. We'll give it a path of time scale slash slider, and again, we'll position this one in the middle. Now, let's define some main toolbar content. We'll give this one a name and a tooltip, and then we can define a static callback method. What's going to happen when the slider moves? Well, we can take that value and adjust the time scale. So back up in our factory method, we can create a new toolbar slider that takes in that content, the current value of the time scale, the min, the max, and the callback method. Now that's not too bad, but we could also hook into the slider's context menu. This way we could extend the right-click behavior and add any custom actions that we want. So maybe we could add a reset action to the context menu. This would be a quick way to set the time scale right back to one. After changing the value like this, we can explicitly refresh the toolbar element. This is a static method on the main toolbar class. You just pass in the path of the element you want refreshed. When we're all finished, we can just return our slider. Let's jump back into Unity. Okay, so now we've got a time scale slider here. If I right click it, we can reset it back to one. And in fact, it might be useful to have a few other presets in the context menu. Maybe quickly go to double speed or half speed. But this might be a little bit more convenient if we just had a button that would do a reset. I don't want to come back into the context menu and find reset every time I want to go back to one. So let's add another button to our main toolbar buttons class. This will be for a new button that just resets the timescale slider. We can keep it under the timescale path, but I'll call it reset. Inside, let's grab a built-in refresh icon. And then we can create the button content using the icon and tooltip. Then we can create the actual toolbar button and define what happens when it's clicked. On click, we reset the timescale back to its default value. And because this change happens programmatically, we're going to explicitly refresh the slider so that its visual state stays in sync. Then we can just return the button. That's it. So my slider is still at 2.8. I click the button, goes right back to 1. Now, this is all well and good, but it might be interesting if we could style these a little bit better or add some space in between them or, you know, anything that you could dream up. Why don't we open the UI Toolkit debugger? So if I click on pick element and then I hover over one of these things that we've just created, we should be able to get some insights into the actual structure of what's going on here. 
So a little bit above where I clicked, we can see we have the editor toolbar slider. If we go up a few more elements, we can see the actual visual element with the path specified as its name. If I were to apply some padding, I'd probably want to do it here. This is the container of the actual slider. Just above that, you can see the play mode container as well. That could also be a good candidate if I wanted some space in between the buttons. Now let's take a look at what's going on with our reset button. Let's grab pick element again, select the reset button. Here you can see we've got the editor toolbar button. And again, this one is nested under a visual element with the name that we gave as the path. So here the container doesn't have very many styles, but the button itself does have some margin and some padding. It might be nice if we could have it sit closer to the slider and maybe we could make the icon a little less prominent as well. So if we we're going to apply some styling, we might want to apply it to the container or maybe a child of the container that matches a certain type. So let's introduce a small utility class whose job is purely styling. We'll have a generic helper method here where the generic constraint makes sure this only works with UI toolkit elements and a callback will let us pass in styling logic without hard coding it into the utility itself. Inside, we're going to defer execution until the editor has finished its current update cycle. The delay call delegate executes after all inspectors have updated. Now, before we fill this out, let's define a method that we can use to help us find an element by name. We can start by grabbing all of the editor windows. We can iterate over each of them and inspect its hierarchy. Every window should have a root element, but if it doesn't have one yet, we can skip it and move on. Then let's have a variable we can use for results. First, we could try to find an element that matches by name. If we find it, we can immediately return. If we don't find that, maybe we could search by tooltip. These extension methods are part of our Unity Utilities library, which is linked in the video description. Now, if we can't find the element, let's just return null. Now let's add one more helper that bridges discovery and styling. Here we can take the element name we're looking for and the callback that will apply the actual visual changes. First, let's try to find the element using the helper we just walked through. Then we can guard against the element not being found. If the element exists, we can invoke the styling callback and let the caller decide what visual changes to apply. Now back up in our main method inside the delayed call, we can delegate element lookup to our helper and focus purely on resolving the correct target. So let's declare a variable that will hold the typed element we want to style. First, let's check to see whether the element we found already matches the requested type. If it does, we can use it directly. Otherwise, we'll fall back to querying its children. This will let us reach into composite toolbar elements and grab the first matching child of the desired type. Then let's make one final safety check. If everything succeeded, we can apply the caller's styling logic. And that's it. So why don't we jump over to the main toolbar buttons class and we can style our refresh button a little bit. Here we can call our new styler utility. We're gonna pass in the path of the containing element, but we're gonna strongly type it to look for an editor toolbar button. On the button itself, we could strip out all of its padding. We could also strip down the margins and then maybe we could give it a default minimum width and maximum width. Additionally, the icon is displayed as an image element inside of that button. So as long as we could find it, we could actually make it a little bit smaller. Now it's worth pointing out that you could do this with a style sheet as well. You can add a class to any of these elements. Why don't we come over to our slider here? I'm going to target the time scale slash slider, but I'm going to match it on visual element and not on the slider itself because I want to add padding to the container. Maybe that's enough styling for now. Let's go back to unity. So now we can see our refresh button looks a little bit smaller and it's a little bit closer to the slider. And of course, we've got a little bit of space in between the play mode section and the time scale slider. And of course, we can verify that just by opening up the UI toolkit debugger again and having a look at some of these elements. You can see we've stripped out the margin and the padding from the editor toolbar button. The image underneath it has been scaled down to 12 by 12 and we've added 10 padding to our time scale slider on the containing element, but only on the left side. Now there's quite a bit more you can do with this new functionality. There's all kinds of different editor toolbar tools like toggles, fields, dropdowns. There's also a utility that will let you group these different things together as their own button strip. So we're not gonna get into all of those things, but if you jump over to the documentation and have a look, you might be able to come up with some other creative ways that you can enhance the editor for your workflow. From here, you can turn the main toolbar into a first class part of your workflow, not just a place for play and pause, but a surface for the tools you actually use all the time. Just remember, it's only available in Unity 6.3. And with that, we're gonna wrap it up. Don't forget to join us on Discord if you feel like it. We've got a new video every Sunday, so hit that bell. I'll throw another video up on the screen. Maybe I'll see you there.